for some moments there, I was worried about whether or not I was in integrity or not. <laughs> I thought maybe the GPS broke or something. <laughs> Took us somewhere we weren't supposed to be. But understand that our God is an awesome God. Yes. That he is moving, doing things, even when you don't think he's doing anything. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you before that the place has been prepared, but he's preparing us for the place. Yes. Yes. Having a great place and people not prepared for the place messes the whole thing up. You would jump in a vehicle that you weren't trained to drive. <laughs> Pretty rough ride, wasn't it? Because yes. you weren't trained on it. So you got to have the, the vehicle and you got to have the people who can deal with the vehicle. Don't do that. You got a problem on your hands. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 4. Last week, we finished with verse 9. Verse 9 says, Those things which we have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. So last week we asked the question, have we learned anything? The question made, if you've learned something, we need to learn how to do it. Amen? Amen. Learning isn't just hearing, but it's receiving it and taking it into your spirit. It's taking it inside of you and being willing to apply the thing that you've learned. You ever taught somebody something and a year later you felt like you had wasted your time? Because you said to yourself, you said to yourself, because you're not, you're not mean enough to say it to them. <clears throat> you said to yourself, man, I wasted my time. You didn't learn a thing that I told you. Saints of God, we don't ever want God to say that about us. That's right. <clears throat> that we haven't learned a thing that he's taught us. Every day, he gives us opportunities to practice what we learn. Anybody doing the practicing this week? Did you pass the test? So he says, the things that you learn he says, do them. Then he, he, he finishes with saying that the God of peace, right, shall be with you. It's amazing the peace that you have when you walk in the things that God teaches you. Wow. Because you know it's his word. You know he taught you. Therefore, you have this great peace and this great confidence. And you can walk in it. And it's totally different when you just lollygagging through life. Wow. So he says, when you grab hold to the things that I've taught you, he says the God of peace shall be with you. And that was last week. So let's look at verse 10. See verse 10? He says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. The word rejoice that's what he's saying I do. And he said I do it greatly. Not just half-heartedly. Nobody has to drag it out of me. I rejoice. He says I rejoice. The word rejoice talks about a joy that is a direct result of the grace of God. Let me say that again. The word rejoice is speaking of a joy that is a, re, a direct result of the grace of God. Amen. So here's my question. When should we, when does God not have grace? When is he not gracious? When is it that his grace is not available or not active or not present? The answer
answer is never. So his grace, we're talking about a joy that is a direct result of his grace. And since we said his grace is always present, when should we be rejoicing? Always. Somebody wrote, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. Then why don't we rejoice? Why is it not evident that we are as the people of God are rejoicing and rejoicing greatly? Why is it if, if this rejoicing is a joy that is a result of God's grace and we say his grace is always and forever, why aren't we rejoicing always and forever? Because we get caught up in stinking thinking. It's because we choose not to believe his report, but to re believe the report of the enemy, to believe the report of our feelings, to be believe the report of somebody who does not walk with God. And even if it's somebody who does walk with God, who at that moment has yielded their instrument, their, their, their members as an instrument of unrighteousness, because even Christians can say and do dumb things. Right. Sure. But he's just coming down, talking to them about the things that they ought to think on and the things that they ought to do. He busts out with a, the word but. He says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Mm -hmm. In other words, I don't care what's happening. I don't care what's going on. I don't even care how you people of Philippi feel about me at the moment. My purpose in life is to rejoice in the Lord, mm -hmm. to rejoice greatly. Why? Because his grace is always his grace. Right. His kindness is always his kindness, even if it ain't yours. Right. His love is always his love and grace, even if it's not yours. I rejoice greatly because of who he is, not because of what's happening around me. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Christians ought to know that. Well. But we don't. We don't. We have to be pumped up sometimes. Mm -hmm. We have to be instructed in the way that we are supposed to be because we, we take we set our affections on stuff around us instead of on things above. Mm -hmm. Listen, he's going to tell you later that he learned. And that's what today's uh, uh, our title is. Yes. yes, I have learned. We start now with understanding that our first thing is we got to learn how to rejoice. Right, right. And rejoice greatly. Well. I said we got to learn. See, let me tell you why. We're controlled by our feelings. Well, come on. Grace has nothing to do with your feelings. That's right. Rejoicing has nothing to do with your feelings. It has nothing to do with circumstances. What other people are saying, what I feel, what's going on. It has nothing to do with what mood I'm in. Right. <clears throat> Back in that. Um, Lutheran church again. <laughs> See, we're supposed to be maturing in the Lord. Well. When the Bible says to, uh, for the perfecting of the saints, that's what it means. It's the maturing of the saints. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's taking the saints to a place to where it doesn't matter what's happening or what's going on, <laughs> what anybody said, or what they're threatening me with, whatever. I'm, God is still God. He's still sitting on the throne. And I will rejoice in him because his grace endures forever. Well. His yeah. mercy endures forever. Yeah. He's still King of Kings. He's still Lord of Lords. I don't have to wait until everything is going good in order to be rejoicing. That's right. right. That's right. Come on. Because it's a joy that has to do with the grace of God. Right. Mm -hmm. 
That's why I keep explaining all the time that, that there's a difference between joy and happiness. Right. Happiness is what we experience. What is happiness about when everything's going good? Mm-hmm. When I'm getting my way. When I just got a promotion on my job. When my boys pat me on the back. When my husband bought me flowers this week. You mm-hmm. wrote, wrote that down on your calendar, didn't you? <laughs> When my kids are behaving themselves, mm-hmm. when my car is running good, mm-hmm. when my computer ain't giving me headaches, well. I'm happy then. Yeah. But the moment something turns wrong, nobody knows. How <laughs> Sam, but I rejoice mm-hmm. in the Lord. And not just half-heartedly. I do it greatly. Why? Because he's greatly to be praised. He says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly. I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Listen. He puts a comma there. He says that now at the last, your care of me has flourished again. Mm-hmm. As you're reading through your Bible, and I'm sure that's what you do on a regular basis. <clears throat> As you're reading through your Bible, you'll find out that the Apostle Paul, as great a man as he was, he caught hell from the body of Christ. He caught hell from the Gentiles. He caught hell from the Jews, just like Jesus did. He caught hell. I was reading through 1 Thessalonians uh, uh, yesterday, and and it said, for you know how shamefully I was treated at Philippi. Right, Mm -hmm. right. Talking to the Thessalonian church. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Philippian church. Mm -hmm. He says, you know how shamefully I was treated there. But even with that being said, and with him being in prison right now, he says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Right. What is he saying? It doesn't matter what's happening. God's still God. That's right. That's right. He's still worthy of my praise. Amen. And, I, and it's, 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 listen, we, we got to come to a place where we learn that. Right. Because you can't always expect something to happen to make you feel better. Right. You have to learn how to draw it out of God. He right. says, in your presence is fullness of joy. Right. Not in your presence if everything's going good. Right, right. Not in your presence if everybody's treating me right. right. He says, in your presence, there's fullness of joy. Right? He says, but I rejoice in the Lord. And this is that now at the last. In other words, he said, now at the last, at the last. In other words, they ain't always been doing this. <laughs> Whatever it is they're going to do, they ain't been doing it all the time. Right. He says, now at last, right? He said, finally. Right. He said, better late than never. Right. Can I say something? In your own life, there are going to be some finally moments. Mm-hmm. In other words, there are going to be things that you thought somebody should have done for you, and they're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you'll let that get you bitter. And then later on, if they do it, you'll point out to them that they should have done it a long time ago. (laughs) All right, come on, Lutheran Church. (laughs) You're going to talk to them like, like, you know, it's about time. You're going to kind of rub it in a little bit. Knowing that we shouldn't. He says that now at last, finally, better late than never. He says you finally got it. Sometimes it takes people a long time to finally get it. Right. Right. But rejoice in the fact that they finally get it. Amen. Don't keep pointing out how long it took them to get it. Right. Rejoice in the fact that they finally got it. Right. Yep. 
That's right, ladies. Keep telling your husband over and over again. And finally, he'll get it. But I haven't. Don't be sure. <laughs> but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last, listen, what last why? Your care for me has flourished. Your care for me, the word is phroneo, P H R O N E O. Phroneo. It means to think. Okay? Your care for me, it means to think. You ever been around people where you say to yourself, now don't look at nobody. But you say to yourself, is that boy thinking at all? Is she thinking at all? That boy got any brains whatsoever. Why? Because there are certain things that you and I both think that people ought to know. Right. And you shouldn't have to tell them. Right. And sometimes when you're dealing with people, you be saying to yourself, is that boy got a brain at all? So he says, you're care for me. In other words, you're thinking about me. But listen, he's implying here that not only about thought, but also about your affections and about your will and your consideration in this matter. Because right. see, a lot of people will think but won't do nothing. Right. Yeah, that's Hello? Yeah. A lot of people will think, but they won't do but he's about to say something that he's rejoicing about because finally they're getting it. Right. He says that now at last your care for me has flourished. So not only did they just get it, he says it has flourished. And, and, and um, it says flourished again. It means to make a dry tree flourish or a dry place Flourish, to bring life to something that was dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all better come with me. Some of y'all got some dead friendships. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That need to flourish again. Mm -hmm. They dried up. Some of you got some, some, some dead friendships that need to stay dead. Well, Y'all know the difference. Not everybody is good for you. That's right. Not everybody is expedient for you. In other words, help you get along. Some people drag you down. That's right. When that scripture says, lay aside the weight and the sin, you know, and the sins that so easily beset you, sometimes it's people. Well, you got to lay them aside. Don't be rude to them, but lay them aside. Speak to them when you see them, wave. But don't hang out with them. Why? Because all they do, you always feel worse after you leave them yeah. than you did when you got with them. Right. What's that term, that old term? Somebody call them joy suckers. <laughs> they call them joy suckers. They suck the joy right out of you. Mm. He says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. It has begun to sprout. It has blossomed. He says, you have revised your thoughts towards me in this area. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you before a long time ago, we, we were talking about the fact that we're blessed to be a blessing. That's yes. right. Blessings are not one-sided. That's right. right. Come on. They're not one way. Right. If your whole mentality of life is, what can somebody do for me? What can somebody give me? You know, if that's your mentality, you need a wake-up call. Right. Yes. Not only does God want to bless you, but he wants you to be a blessing. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't ever think that blessings is simply about money, because it's not. No, it's that's not. what we miss so much. Yeah. Sometimes you bless somebody just by giving them a call and encouraging them. That's right. Sending them a card saying, thinking about you. Right. I, I saw this one little... Um, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it now, a little picture thing. And, and it says that sometimes the greatest thing you can do for somebody, he says, when you can't be there for them, is to hug them with your prayers. Amen. Right. Yeah. Ain't that neat? Yeah, nice. Sometimes you just can't be there. But you hug them with your prayers. Amen. That's what you give them. 
for that day. And so God intends you to be a blessing. Paul has blessed them. Now he's going back to them and says, I want to thank you for blessing me. Right. Hello? Yeah. Listen, you, you got no friends where it's always one side. Mm -hmm. don't, don't call them out, okay? <laughs> don't, don't call the name out. But you got friends, it's always one side. Mm -hmm. You always doing something for them. Mm -hmm. They never do anything for you. Well, In fact, when you look down on the caller ID and they call you, your first thought is, because you don't say this because you're too spiritual. Your first thought. <laughs> your first thought is, oh God, what do they want now? Because that's the only time you hear from them is when they want something. Well. He's saying here, no, I greatly rejoice because finally, after all I've been giving to you, you're now thinking about taking care of me. Right. Mm -hmm. Listen, you don't have to be ashamed of thinking that way. You don't have to be ashamed or expecting people to sometimes do something for you since you've been doing something for them well, all this time. Well. You don't have to be ashamed of that. You don't have to feel like you're out of bounds on that. Okay, You have a right to. Some people, all they all want to do is take from you and never want to give. Something wrong with that picture. Yeah. We've taught over and over again. It ain't always about money. Like I said, show up and help set things up. Amen. Stay out the late and help tear things down. Yeah. Come over and help clean stuff up to get it ready. Right. I can't bring nothing, but I can come and help. That's your contribution. Right. Okay? Right. Don't ever get to the place where everybody's supposed to do something for you. Amen. Oh. Sometimes you walk around um, just during your day. The smile that you give somebody may be the only smile they get all right. day right. long. Uh -huh. right. You've been standing in a line at a grocery store and the people in front of you just got their own one and they just tear the cashier up. Just talking all kinds of crazy stuff to the cashier. and You can see the cashier doing the best they can. They're just chewing the cashier out. Now, when you get there, you make the cashier smile. Okay. You ain't got to give them no money. Just be kind. Say something that, that you know, I sometimes I get there, and I, I, I'll stand there and look at the person, and I say, whoo, look like you're having a bad day. <laughs> and they're going to start laughing. I say, well, I, this is my belief, that, that there are fools and ignorant people all over the world, and God just sprinkles them around all over the place just to keep us honest, you know. And then you can bust out that. I, I said, you just had three of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right in a row. And then they start laughing, you know. In other words, be, be a person who gives to help people, you know, along their way. Because you may be the only smile they get. You may be the only smile they get. And listen, it could get so bad, they want to go home and commit suicide. Right. You don't know your smile and kind comment may have saved somebody from committing suicide. Right. That's right. Care about people. Yes. Care about them. Okay. You don't have to preach them along long sermon. Just show that you care. Yeah. In fact, I guarantee you, the next time you go to that store, that cashier is going to see you in the line and start smiling before you even get there. Okay? They can't wait till you get there. When I retire, you know you stand up there and they say all those nice things about you. Them lying dogs. <laughs> they stand up and say all those nice things about you. You know, stuff that they never said while you were working there. You know, and I wouldn't listen to all that kind of stuff. I had a file. A couple of days before I retired, I sent out an email to the people that I dealt with around the base. And I told them that my parole day had come. <laughs> <laughs> that I had served my time. <laughs> and that Friday was my last day. Mm -hmm. I said, I just wanted you guys to know that. I hope I've done you a good service. I didn't want you to wonder what happened to that handsome guy that used to come every month. I didn't want you to have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. They responded to me. I got some of the most magnificent comments that I got in my whole career. Mm -hmm. 
from the people that I serve around the base. One lady said, she says, uh, Tim, I'm going to miss you so bad. She said, you don't know how hard it is working. She worked in, in what they call logistics. She, she uh, uh, procured all the parts for all this, the shops. She says, you don't know how tough it is over here. She says, these guys come in here, they yell at us, they curse at us sometimes, they treat us like dogs because they ordered the wrong part. <laughs> or because the part that they ordered came in broke. Oh, yeah. And they argue at us and yell at us and so forth. Oh, she, yeah. said, she said, but you were different. She says, you never yelled at us. She says, you always had a smile on your face when you came here. You always made us feel special. We rejoice and look, she didn't use the word rejoice. We got excited every time we saw you coming because you knew we knew you were going to make us laugh and stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you do for somebody's day. You got to care enough, though, to want to do something for somebody else. Yes. Paul says, you finally get it. You're not going to, that your care for me has flourished again. And I'm going to tell you what he was talking about. He was talking about earlier uh, that they had actually sent him a gift. Okay. Now I know that that's blasphemy what I just said because we all know that all pastors <laughs> and preachers do is try to beg for money and get you to, to try, to try to separate you from your money. And we know that's a sin. <laughs> How disgusting. Anyway, so he's thanking them for their care for him. He says, your care blossomed, listen, into activity again. Now, go back to verse uh, 10. It says, for your care for me has flourished again. Listen, wherein you were also careful, you were concerned, but you lacked an opportunity. Well, mm -hmm. I know you cared, but you lacked the opportunity to yeah. share that you cared. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's how it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and then other times it's just because you're tight. But anyway, <clears throat> he said, but you lacked the opportunity. I want to show you a couple things. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're talking about giving. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. My wife and I have this, uh, I guess, attitude based on our experience. We've seen so much abuse in the house of God when it comes to giving mm. that it put a bad taste in our mouth and so we rarely talk about it and we just we got a box up there and you can bring it up if you want and we don't even we don't even, we don't even pass the plate and shame you into putting it in the box in the plate <laughs> because everybody looking at you why because the bible says that the lord loves a cheerful giver <coughs> and that we ought to be honored that we are able to give unto god a portion of that which he has blessed us with that's right we ought to be honored and not bludgeon to death, and not do so begrudgingly. Right. There's a lot of reasons for that, by the way. Uh, Malachi says about bringing your tithes and so forth into the storehouse. Mm -hmm. There's a part that we rather talk about. He says that he will rebuke the devourer. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, everything that you have, there's a devourer out there waiting to devour what you have. Mm -hmm. God says, I will rebuke him. In other words, I'll make what you hold on to go further. I'll bless it. I'll give you more and more. In the old uh, Baptist church, we used to sing a song that said, you can't beat God giving. That's right. No matter how hard you try. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, today, we do all kinds of other things, but we try not to. And so he says um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, mm -hmm. you there? Yes, sir. Let's look at verse 7. He says, who goeth to warfare any time at his own charge charges mm -hmm. who planted a vineyard and eat it not of the fruit thereof mm -hmm. or who feed a flock <clears throat> and eat it not of the milk of the flock mm -hmm. say I these things as a man again this is Paul mm -hmm. no, Paul car help from everywhere he went <laughs> or say it not the law the same also for it is written, verse 9, in the law of Moses, that thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Right. Oh. Does God take care of for oxen? Yeah. 
In other words, even if the ox going through the fields gets to eat the stuff in the fields. Right? Yeah. Verse 10 says, Or saith he of it altogether for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, that is written that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Uh -huh. Anybody see that? You're about to say that. I want to make sure I ain't got a fake Bible. Man. Verse 11. Listen, here's, here's how he breaks it down. You ready? He says, If we have sown unto you spiritual things, as it is. Uh, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? The preacher come along and, and everybody come and they minister the word of God, doing all that great spiritual food and sowing spiritual seed into your life and helping you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, people say, well, yeah, I love this saying. I, I, I think I heard it the other day. Um, says that the... Um, the people at church have chosen a vow of poverty for their pastor. <laughs> the people in the house of God have chosen a vow of poverty for their pastors. Okay. So is it a great thing that we should read your carnal things? In other words, we sow spiritual things. Is it, is it a, a great thing that we... Uh, uh, receive your, your carnal things, uh, money and so forth. That's yeah. what it's talking about. Right. Yeah. Verse 1 says, if others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? He says, nevertheless, we have not used this power. Mm -hmm. But suffer all things, listen, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. In other words, lest you should get an attitude. <laughs> lest you should get mad and use that as an excuse not to come to church. Well, come on. People do. I ain't going down that church. All they want is your money. <laughs> Verse 13. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? Mm -hmm. And they which wait at the altar, altar are partakers with the altar. Mm -hmm. Remember when, when David was on the, on the run? And he forgot, he didn't, he didn't take anything, didn't have a sword, he went to, was it Himalayan? Was it? Was it? And, and he says, is there any common bread? He says, no, it's only the showbread that was made for us, the, the priest. He said, that's all we got, though. Right? That's all we got. Remember Eli's sons? Mm -hmm. They got in trouble because when the people brought the food, to make their sacrifices, the priests were to eat from the sacrifices. Right. But they were supposed to wait until after the fact. Right. They didn't want after the fact. They wanted the fresh stuff still in the packet, said Smith's on it. <laughs> okay? They didn't want it after it had been sacrificed. They wanted the fresh stuff so they could put it in the freezer and, and barbecue it later, you know? And so, and, and so they were taken from the people. And, he, and, and God said to them, you, You've made the people regret. Even the sacrifice of the Lord. Right, right. They don't even want to come to church. And see, that's what me and my wife have been seen so much and experienced so much. That 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 they begged the people so much and it was always pay this and pay this and give it this and give it this that you hated to go to church. You couldn't afford to go to church. Because <laughs> of the 95 offerings they took up every day. And it left such a bad uh taste in our mouth that we said, no, nah, we don't want to do that. We, we, we don't want to do that. We don't want to be a part of that whatsoever. And so, it should be a joyful thing. That's right. We, we consider it as a part of our worship service. You know, it's a part of your worship to God. And if you don't want to worship God, that's cool. We don't worry. We're not, we're not going to follow you out the door. And No, we ain't doing any of that kind of stuff. Okay? We ain't doing any of that kind of stuff. So he says, uh, let me read verse uh, 13. 14. So even so, the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel, look, should live of the gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anybody tell you anything different, they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay? Ain't no sin to give offerings and to give salaries and all that stuff to those who work the gospel. That's right. Not a sin at all. That's right. Now, you know, if, 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 if I won't say that either. I don't want a plane. I want a helicopter. Anyway, anyway, no. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm, 
I'm afraid of heights, <laughs> so you know I'm kidding. I ain't get up in no helicopter looking at nothing. So he says that you were careful. It says I'm 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 blessed in the fact that you have re uh, constituted your that your 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 care for me has re flourished in you because you forgot about me for a while. Now keep reading. Go back to Philippians. Keep reading. This is going to help you. Ready? Verse 10 says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you care for me, has flourished again, wherein you were careful, but you lacked opportunity. Look at verse 11. Mm -hmm. Not that I speak in respect of want. Mm -hmm. In other words, I ain't begging. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm not asking you this because I'm, I'm hungry or because I need it because I don't have. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully. We had to learn this. Because we grew such a hatred for people begging for money and our desire not to get caught up in that in any way, shape, or form, we had a problem receiving from people. Mm -hmm. I repeat, my wife and I had a problem receiving from people. Whenever somebody wanted to give us something, we go, no, 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 no. And then one day say, listen, you're blocking them from their blessing. Right. Mm -hmm. I repeat, you're blocking them from their blessing. How many of you know that it is more blessed to give than to receive? That's right. Yes. How many of you know that in giving, you open up the wonders of heaven so that God can do something for you? How many of you know that when you don't give, you don't make room for what God has in store for you down the road? Come on, man. I'll say that. <laughs> Listen, you're blessing constipated. <laughs> <laughs> you so full of it, you can't get nothing else in there. <laughs> oh, let that sink in. <laughs> can, can we talk just for a second? Why would God bless you with when He knows all you're going to do is waste it? Well, why would He bless you with when He knows that you're never going to do anything for anybody else? Some the Bible says, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's a part of that. Listen, there's a lot of unsaved people who are filthy rich because God blessed them to be filthy rich because he knew that they would give from their riches. You don't have to be saved to give. There's a lot of unsaved people who give. Give millions of dollars to all kinds of good causes. And because God knows that they will take that and put it where he needs it at, he'll give to them. So open up that bank account and look. <laughs> Could it be? Anyway. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You have to have that mentality as children of God. Mm -hmm. God gave you everything. Yes. Yes. If he gave you everything and you want to be like him, what's that mean? You got to be willing to give everything that he tells you to give. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you wonder, how come, why is it that I have two of these? You don't know right now, but tomorrow you won't find out why you have two of them. Because you're going to run right smack dab into somebody who needs one of them things that you got. And God's going to watch you to see if you're willing to give it. If you won't, the Bible says about the people who don't use what they have rightfully, he says to him that have, it shall be taken away from him. Even that which he has shall be taken from him. When he says about rebuking the devourer, I'm telling you, you'll get and be tight with what you get, your refrigerator's gonna break, your washing and dryer's gonna break. I mean, the new one that you got. Yeah. It's gonna break. Yeah. Your car's gonna blow a transmission. Yeah. Why? God's gonna dry it all up. Yeah. Why? Because you had the wrong mentality with it. Yeah. <coughs> when you give, stuff comes. I say this not out of warrant, out of lack. I'm saying it for your blessing. I'm saying it for your blessing. 
When I used to work on the base, people would come find me with stuff that they had and say, do you need this? I didn't even need it, but I would take it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because tomorrow, I need it. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, I'll walk into that person who needs it. I don't need it. But I know if God sends it to me to give me something, I'm going to take it if I can store it. You know, if they come to me with a big motorhome, I don't know about that. I ain't got room for a motorhome. But they come with something, I'm going to take it. Why? Is it because I'm greedy? No. I'm going to take it and say, Lord, what are we going to do with this? Yes. Believing that next week, God's going to show me who needs this. Their care for him had reflourished. Mm -hmm. They got excited about giving to him. Do you understand that when you give to somebody, you become, especially in a ministry setting, you become a partaker of their ministry? Mm -hmm. A partner in the gospel with them? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they can't go without what you gave them. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets saved on that trip, you were partaker of that salvation trip. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you gave. The people over, in, the, the missionaries that come home, where they come, they gotta raise funds. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna go to Africa, but I'll support you going. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna go to India, mm -hmm. but I'll support you going. You become a partaker by giving to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you fix it so they can spend more time doing what God sent them to do Versus trying to raise funds to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, one of them Lutheran churches. <laughs> but it's okay. So he says, not that I speak in respect to war. In other words, I'm not hurting. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this because I need something or because I lack something. But I understand the principle of being blessed to be a blessing. I understand the principle about give and it shall come back to you. Good measure, right? And, and so I understand the principle. I understand about being a, a fellow laborer in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember that old saying, uh, Fill the dreams. If you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. In church, I like to say, if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> but I also like to say, if you preach about money, they won't come. <laughs> <laughs> they won't come. <laughs> they won't come. But it's in the passage. We went verse by verse too. We hear now, okay? He <laughs> says, not that I speak in respect to want. Listen, for I have learned. See that? Mm -hmm. For I have learned. Mm -hmm. See, forget about money just for a second. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's carrying this conversation. He says, I want to thank you for what you're doing for me. He says that you, you had the opportunity to be a part of this ministry and you've done a great job in doing so. But he says, I'm, I'm not saying this. He says, I want to thank you for what you did, but I'm not saying it because I want more. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it because I'm trying to butter you up. Because I'm in lack or something. He says, Well, I, I, I don't speak in respect of one. Okay? I'm not hurting. Okay? I'm not falling short in any way. But he says, For well, I have learned. What does that mean? First off, it means that it hasn't always been that way. I have learned. Saints of God, we got to do some learning. Don't ever stop learning. I repeat, don't ever stop learning. Don't ever stop growing in your faith. Don't ever stop growing in your knowledge of God and, and, and his way and allowing him to work in you. Don't ever stop growing. Why? Because when you do, you're going to drop and, and die. Mm -hmm. That's when Christianity gets boring to you. Mm -hmm. When you think you've passed your turn, that you've learned all you're going to learn, and that you're just waiting now for your time, don't ever get to that place. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things behind and pressing on. He says, I have learned. I have learned. It hasn't always been that way. I had to learn that. He was talking earlier about exercising your faith. 
we was talking earlier about, about learning to go. You've got to learn things. You've got to learn things. Every day, you want to be better off today than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn things. So what did he learn? For I have learned what? In whatsoever state I am. Whether I'm in Utah or California. No, it's not what he's talking about. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. But, but some people need to learn that. There are people who come to Utah and hate Utah because it ain't where they came from. Yes. Okay? One of the things you learn about God is wherever he plants you at, you are to blossom right there. That's right. You go somewhere because you think better, you're going to dry up. And your drying up may not be physical drying up. It can be spiritual drying up. Why? Because you're not where you're supposed to be. You're not where you're supposed to be. He says, not that I speak in respect or want what? For I have learned in whatsoever state I am to be condemned, content. The word the state I am is talking about the quality or the condition that you find yourself in. It also has to do with the stuff. Right? Because a lot of us build our whole life based on the stuff. We consider success by how much stuff we have. Mm -hmm. You ever been driving behind that motorhome that, that has the bumper sticker on that says that I'm spending my children's inheritance? Mm -hmm. Or the one that says whoever dies with the most stuff wins? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. You find yourself worth in the amount of stuff that you have. Mm -hmm. You find your sense of success by how new your car is. Yeah. How large your house is. Yeah. Right? Whether you got a swimming pool or not. Well. Don't get one. Okay. <laughs> Don't. It's a lot of work. Okay? And a lot of, um, of insurance liability involved. Yes. Somebody can climb over your fence, mm -hmm. get in un underneath the cover on your pool, and die, and they can sue you for it. Climb over your fence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they can still sue you. Okay? Stay away from it, okay? It ain't, it ain't worth it. You don't swim that much. <laughs> <laughs> go, go on down to the rec center, okay? It says, whatsoever state I am to be content. In other words, there's going to be moments when life is just going to be different. Right. If your only contentment comes from everything being in order, your faith and your stability isn't very strong because circumstances are always going to change. I'm telling you, they're always going to change. I don't care who you are, they're going to change. He says, but notice he says, I've learned. So you got to learn. That word content is, is similar to the word we talk about when we talk about peace. It's a it's an inward stability, a inward um, steadfastness that no matter what's happening around you, you cool. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You cool. Yeah. Yeah. You're content no matter what the circumstances are around you. Why? Because your contentment comes from being at peace with God. Yeah. You gotta learn that. Right. You gotta learn that. Can I tell you something? Thanks. Um, I remember early on in the ministry, I used to talk to older pastors. And I was just gung-ho and all excited and, you know, this and that. And I share some scriptures and tell them what this had ought to be and this, 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 this. I remember the look that was on their face. I can see it today. The look they used to give me, they just kind of look at me and shake their head and smile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I get that look now. <laughs> 20 years later, I get it. I get it. I get it. I remember uh, talking to one pastor, and I ain't calling no name to nobody else. I found this one pastor, and I said something to him, and he said, well, they're going to do what they're going to do. And I thought to myself, that's the biggest cop out I ever heard. They're going to do what they're going to do. Guess what I say now? They're going to do what they're going to do. <laughs> what? I've learned. As time is going on, I've learned. And I've learned there's only so much I can do. I've learned that I can I can preach good word, 
but you got to receive good word. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. That you got to receive it. I don't care how much. You, and, 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 and common sense wise, that is also what that parable about the sower is. Right? It was the same word that went every place. What was the difference? It fell on different yeah. ground. Yeah. In a different soil. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Today, when some of y'all walk out here, you know, oh, that was deep. Somebody out going to walk out here and go, that was so boring. <laughs> and it's the same word. It's the same word. Now, if I fall asleep, you know it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor fell asleep. And he was preaching. <laughs> Whew, you know it was boring. It's not that I, spe I talk, I speak in respect to one. Listen, let me stop here just for a second too. Listen, a lot of times we don't do things because in our mind we're thinking about what they're going to think. Hmm. We're saying, I don't want to say this because I don't want them to think that I need them. I don't want them to think that I'm trying to talk them in something. You know you need to say it. Because they need to say it. But you, you worry about how they're going to think about it. And Paul said, no, I, I'm not in need of anything. He said, I want to thank you for what you did. He says, I'm not saying this because I'm trying to butter you up, get you to send me some more, you know. Hey, 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 I need, I need that new jet, you know. He's not saying any of that kind of stuff. He says, no, that's that's not where I'm coming from. And, and when we preach about giving here, it ain't because we want money. God has always been faithful in Integrity Christian Fellowship. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful we have been debt free from day one. Okay? From day one. Okay? And so we don't say it, but we understand that it unlooses the blessings in your own life. It does. It un how do you see that? Look at all the scriptures. They all line up. He that show mercy shall receive mercy. Right? You be kind, you're going to receive kindness, right? Mm -hmm. You show love, you're going to get it. You forgive, you're going to be forgiven, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It all lays out. Mm -hmm. You give, you're going to receive. Mm -hmm. It all lays out. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. You get tight, I tell you, God is, uh, who is this talking to? Who's, uh, I can't remember if it's Hosea or Haggai. I think it's Hosea. When he talks about them, he says, you gather in all this stuff, but it's like you have holes in your pocket. Uh -huh. yeah. When you act stingy with your stuff and hold back, it's mine, 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 and I don't owe God nothing, it's like he puts holes in your pocket. And you lose everything. Paul says, I poured out to you. I'm really grateful that you've also poured out to me. That's what he's saying. I ain't begging. Uh, I've learned. So what's he say? He says, I, uh, not in respect, speak in respect of one, for I've learned that in whatsoever state I am, there were to be condemned. Look at verse 12. He says, I know. I know how to be abased. I know how to be abased. A lot of people can't handle that. The word abased means to be humble. It means to be brought, uh, to be brought low. And it, and it means it in every single way. In other words, to be to be um, brought low from a financial point of view, where you look in that checkbook and it ain't looking good, but yet you're still trusting in God. Mm -hmm. You're still rejoicing in the Lord. Okay, versus them other times when you look in there, boys, like, woo, you hit the jackpot. Everything's going good. A whole bunch of zeros back there. Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm telling you, in your life, you're going to go through it. Right. You're going to have good seasons, you're going to have bad seasons. Right. That's everybody. That's everybody. We always teach about trying to live debt free and making good decisions. You can do all that and still find yourself in trouble. That's right. right. That's right. All, all it takes is some kind of a bad medical situation. Yeah, right. Exactly. And even though you've lived great, you find yourself in trouble. Right. You know that insurance. I got good insurance. It paid ninety percent. Well. Bill was hundred thousand dollars. You got to come up with ten. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, appreciate you paying the nine, but now I got to pay ten. Yeah. And so things like that can 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 destroy you. Right. So you you, you got to learn that God is good in the good times. Excuse me, God is God in the good times. He's also God in the bad times. That's right. Yeah. 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 And Paul says, "I've learned that." Okay, I know how to be a yeah. and I know how to abound when it's one good. I know how to abound. 
Listen, he says, and everywhere and in all things, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed. Who's instructing him? The word of God. I'm instructed. God's teaching. He's showing you. If you don't know how to be joyful, excited, dedicated, doing the small things and the little stuff and the tough times, you're not going to know how to do it in the good times. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. People will tell you the hard times that strong people know is mostly the good times that strong people. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's the good times that strong people. That's why Deuteronomy was written to tell them when you go into this land and you receive all this stuff that you did not plant, houses you did not build, all this stuff, don't forget God. That's right. Because that's what happens when things are going good. We don't need God. That's right. When they're going bad, we're on our knees every day. Yeah. All day. All right? And so he says, I've learned that no matter what situation I'm in, they're worth to be content. They're worth to be uh, blessed in who I am and the, and, and the God that I serve. He's God when everything in your life falls apart. Yes. That's right. He's still God. Amen. He should be praised just as much on that day as the day when you just got your tax refund. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He still should be praised. Yes. When your kids are behaving, when they ain't behaving. Well. When Pastor Tim's preaching good. <laughs> you learn That's right. to do those things. You learn that when you're praying and you're seeing God answers your prayers to be content, you learn when you don't see anything happening Amen. to Amen. still be content Amen. and trust in God. Amen. Sometimes God keeps you praying to see how serious you are about the issue. Well, yeah, come on. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Remember he talks about the unjust judge? Mm -hmm. He said the woman just kept knocking, 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 knocking. Mm -hmm. He said, I got no respect for this lady whatsoever, but she's driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do something with it. Now, we ain't going to drive God crazy, but he's going to see how serious we are. You gotta, you gotta do that about your job. You gotta do that about your kids. You gotta yes. do that about that person that you've been praying for his salvation, his or her salvation for years, and you don't see one ounce of evidence mm. that they're hearing the word you're well, saying. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep on praying. That's right. You're not gonna believe this, but somebody prayed for you. That's right. That's right. And they prayed a long time, sweat and everything. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> God. Somebody pray. Yeah. I remember one time this lady, uh, her name is Edie Roach, mm -hmm. and she's a prophetess, and she would always go around, and she had these little cards and stuff that she had, and, and God had to fill these cards out, uh, three by five cards out before she got there, and she'd be playing this little thing, harpsichord, and she would walk with you and hand it to you, and then she'd sing, and God had given her that stuff before she got to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And I looked at my, my card, and on one of my cards it says, you, you are where you are today because you had a praying grandmother. Mm -hmm. I didn't know my grandmother. If I did, it was real. I, I, I think, real young, I saw her in a wheelchair, but I, it had to be real young. So you know what I did? I called my mom. <laughs> mom, this is what happened. And I said, Mom, this is what the card said. My mom says, boy, you just don't know. She says, my mom was praying for you when you were still in the belly. That's right. Amen. In other words, somebody's praying for you. That's right. And somebody prayed for you to get where you are today. Yes. It may have been a long time praying. Yes. They didn't give up. Yes. Don't you give up. Yes. Okay? Yes. Don't you give up. So he says, I learned. Uh, I know how to base and I know how to abound. It says, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full well. 
and to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Both to be full and both to be hungry. Both to have a, an abundance of, both to wish I had some more. Yeah. Yeah. Even in those times, I've learned to be content. That's right. Notice he says that I, I have learned. Okay? Wow. I, I have learned. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sometimes you're going to suffer some, suffer need. You're going to suffer something that you're, you're lacking. You, in other words, you're going to wish you had something else. In those moments, you still got to keep praising God. That's right. There will be times when you're going to find yourself in a place that you don't want to be. You've been somewhere you didn't want to be. And God told you you got to hang in there for a little while. I want you to stay here for a while. What do we do? We run away. <laughs> How do you know that sometimes you're at a place not because of you, but because of somebody that somebody else? Somebody that you're supposed to meet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I ain't said a word about our trip, but we're going to talk about it on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you find yourself mm -hmm. in places mm -hmm. that it ain't about you, it's about the person that you're going to meet there. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And sometimes the person you're going to meet there, oh, you ready? Mm -hmm. You're going to bless them, but they also going to bless you. Amen. Oh. Yeah. And I remember again, it ain't necessarily about money. Right. In other words, sometimes you're there to bless them with some insight that they need. Mm -hmm. And they in return are going to bless you with some insight that you need. Right. And so you got to learn how to be content. If you're not content, you'll run whenever you're in a place that you want to be. Mm -hmm. And you will miss that divine appointment that God was establishing for you. You will miss that divine appointment. Why? Because you got a better plan than God does. You're going to go somewhere else and miss that appointment. And it will come from the most unlikely places. God will send Ned the wino up to you. <laughs> To speak life into you. That's right. That's right. You say, never, never, never. I'm going to church. We went to a church in Vegas. One of the few times we missed church. We went to church in Vegas. We was looking for Integrity Christian Fellowship. It's a big old campus. Oh, yeah. We looked for Integrity Christian Fellowship. We didn't see the sign. Went up to this other church, asked them if they knew where Integrity Christian Fellowship was. They said no. They lied. <clears throat> they said no. They lied because it was right next door to it. We just they didn't have a sign up. We went to that church service. I want to tell you something. In that church service, we learned that no matter how bad it is, it could be worse. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's hard to say that you went somewhere and hated it. That was one of the worst church services we ever been to in our life. It oh I oh it was bad. We came out of that church service, and as we turned around, was about to walk out the door, we saw the sign for Integrity Christian Fellowship. Somebody had knocked it down, so it was on the ground behind this wall. That's why we didn't see it coming up. Okay? That's why we didn't see it coming up. So we ran over there, and they were just finishing up service. We told them who they were. Of course, they got all excited. We integrity from Utah. They integrity from Las Vegas. You know, we talked, talk, talk. Um, But it was a divine appointment. And it showed you what God was God was doing. Mm -hmm. That man and his wife started their church the same year we started our church. Wow. Yeah. That man was a verse by verse through the Bible kind of a teacher. Mm -hmm. That man and his wife got married in July. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Same time, same year. Everything was the same. It was like we shared. I'm telling you. Yep. Everything was the same. In fact, they were having a fellowship meal afterwards. <laughs> That's what they were doing. That's how we kind of got in the end of the service and we stayed with them and talked and so forth. God has divine appointments for you. 
Yes. You gotta listen to him. And you gotta learn in whatsoever state you are to be content. That's right. Wherever God's leading you, don't argue with God and tell God you got a better plan. Well, why don't I do this and why don't I do that? Remember, prayer is to find out the heart of God. Right. You don't pray to convince God to do what you want him to do. That's right. You pray to get yourself lined up with what God is doing. Amen. Amen. So Paul says I've learned. And saints, that's what we want you to learn. Learn to be content. Learn to be rejoicing always. Yes. Uh, the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. It doesn't say for everything. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? No matter what situation you're in, yes. be careful to give thanks to God. Yes. To rejoice in him. Because because the stuff don't matter to him. Yes. It doesn't set him. It doesn't change his feelings and his emotions. It's, it's the same for him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. We've got to learn to be that way. Because if we're not, he can't use us. Yeah. Tell you why? Because he's going to have to wait till we're in the right mood. Oh. <laughs> he's going to have to move, wait until we feel like it. Yeah. And he can't do that. Oh. I'm saying this one last thing, then I stop. I remember this more than once. Uh, ladies that we went to church with who were really nice ladies, but they had these emotional swings that just went from the East Coast to the West Coast. <laughs> and so every time we went to church, we would have to wait to see what mood they were in that morning. Because wow. if they was in the wrong mood, you went through the Sunday school class and came out the other way. Because <laughs> that's how bad it was. That's not the way we're supposed to be. Don't mean nothing ever hurts our feelings and we never get down. But that should not be our lifestyle. Right. We've got to learn that whatsoever situation we're in, to be content and to make a point of rejoicing no matter what. Yes. Why? Because he's still worthy. Mm -hmm. He's still God. He's still sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. He's still the lover of our soul. Yes. What's happening is happening, but it doesn't change who God is. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Shall we pray? Yes. 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 Father, we thank you so much today for all that you're saying to us as your yes. people. We know, Lord, that you have our best at heart, our best interests at heart. You want the best for us. You're doing the greatest work in us and a work that is surely to bring glory to your name. Lord, teach us to be still and know that you're God, to listen to you, Lord, to allow you to direct our path. Lord, break us away from our own habits. Break us away, Lord, from our own traditions, things that we've been taught our whole life that have nothing to do with the Word of God. You have never told us to do everything our own way and bring the tough stuff to you. You said in all our ways we are to acknowledge you. <coughs> so, Lord, teach us to acknowledge you in everything, to be still before you, to ask you before, we want to start out with you, not finish up, just finish up. Every day, Lord, teach us to pray. Every day, teach us, Lord, to, to, to go where you would have us to go. Yes. Give us a boldness, Lord, that we can say no. Somebody trying to lead us somewhere that you're not leading us, Lord, give us a boldness to, to as kindly as possible say, no thanks. Yes. I'm not going there. Father, lead us and guide us. Speak clearly to us. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And Father, we pray, Lord, for those who don't know you as personal Savior. Give them an ear to hear that they need to be saved and saved now. Today is the day of salvation. Don't worry about all the things you've done in the past. Don't tell yourself that you're too bad. Lord, don't tell yourself that you're too good because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't worry about a whole bunch of fancy words. You cry out to the Lord right now from your heart. He hears your heart. He knows what it is you're saying before you even say it. Lord, forgive me a sinner. 
make me a new creature. I give myself to you right now. I give myself to you. I'm not worried about what anybody else says or thinks. This is between me and you. I give myself to you. And I thank you for receiving. I thank you for receiving. I thank you for forgiving me. Even those who are saved, we confess before you, Lord, our shortcomings, our sins, our issues, our own personal problems. We ask your forgiveness. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. So we thank you. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. We honor you with all that we are. We thank you.